there is no easy way to start this. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 This Is Us moments that made us ugly cry. I want it to flow through your hands, and I want you to let it out. All right? Let it all out. For this list, we'll be looking at the most heart-wrenching and emotional instances from the primetime drama. We'll cover everything from the pilot to the series finale, so consider this your spoiler alert. Which Pearson family moment left your eyes swollen or your mascara streaky? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Kate and Toby's Wedding It isn't out of the ordinary for wedding episodes in TV shows to leave you teary-eyed, but Kate's wedding scene took those emotions to a whole new level. Can I marry you one day? As she walks down the aisle to marry Toby, escorted by her brothers, we see a flashback of her young self with her father Jack at first, the memory seems tender. Jack assures his Katie girl that she'll find a much better husband than him. However, the sinking realization of Jack's passing hangs over the sweet scene. And your mom and me, we're gonna be there, you know? Just check him out. Make sure he's as good at board games as you think that he is. And we fully lose it when he imagines being at her wedding. I'll get to walk you down the aisle. And I may even cry a little. We're definitely crying as Kate concludes the bittersweet ceremony without her father. Number 19. Deja Says Goodbye When Randall and Beth decided to open their home to a foster child, fans quickly fell in love with the equally tough and tender Deja. My foster dad helped me with that. Her backstory is complicated, and while there are many rocky moments between her and the Pearsons, none compare to her leaving them. While we're thankful it wasn't ultimately the end of their story as a family, it doesn't make this scene hurt any less. Just because I want to go home doesn't mean I don't like living with you. I know that. You don't have to worry about that, I know. Maybe you're strong enough to make it through the emotional goodbyes between Deja, Beth, and the girls, but it's fully impossible not to tear up at Randall's heartfelt farewell as he watches his daughter go. You remember what I told you about working hard, right? Big house, fancy car. Big house, fancy car. Number 18. Kate watches the Steelers with her dad. Since the show's format weaves together multiple, often initially unspecified timelines, the audience is left to their own devices to solve the Pearson puzzle. Then why did you agree to come over? I don't know, because I didn't want to seem like a weirdo. Jack Pearson is a prominent character from the very beginning, but in the fifth episode of the first season, we're hit with a shocking reveal. When Toby asks Kate why she wouldn't watch the football game with him, she explains she likes to watch games with her dad. I did, and they won. And then they won the Super Bowl. And I just, it's just, it's just what I do now. I watch the Steelers and I watch them with my dad. The audience assumes it's because of how important the Pittsburgh Steelers are to the Pearson family. But when he asks to meet her father, she grabs an urn. This scene sets the context for the following episodes as the tragedy of Jack Pearson's death looms over the interwoven storylines. I mean, my dad is not with us anymore. He's not alive, but he's with us. He's with me every day. Number 17, The Time Capsule. The Family Cabin is where many tearjerker episodes take place, and this season four storyline is no exception. This time around, the siblings struggle to confront the reality of their mother Rebecca's impending memory loss. And I just could never give her a break. And now that we're, we're finally good, this is happening. It's difficult not to cry when they dig up a family time capsule and find a tape recording where Jack sings her praises and sends a message to their future selves. It's incredibly poignant seeing them hear their late father's voice again. Oh man, this is gonna be really embarrassing if it actually was a bird who stole my crappy doodle and uh, it never made it into the capsule, <laughs> so uh, yeah, okay. But it also marks a touching turning point for the siblings, with Kevin notably making his father's architectural dream come true. 
Even after his untimely passing, Jack is still guiding his kids through life, and we're a mess just thinking about it. Everybody's in with Rebecca. Okay. I'll be with the food. Sure. There is a house built out of stone. Number 16. Kevin breaks down on the football field. At one of Kevin's lowest points in his struggle with addiction, he travels to Pittsburgh for an event at his old high school. What up, gridiron, huh? It's been 20 years or so. We begin to understand the root of his pain as he continues to numb himself with more and more alcohol. The episode comes to a tragic climax when he returns to the football field and relives his life-altering injury. He walks through the pain of his past like a sports announcer, and our hearts break for him when he hits us with a devastating line. Kevin Pearson will walk again just in time to bury his beloved father. That'll keep him down for good this time, right? In witnessing just how deeply his father's passing is still affecting him, we see Kevin at his most vulnerable, clinging to a past he never processed. And even when he tries to tell people how pathetic he is, it, they just... They don't hear it. They just cheer. Number 15. Kate's Harmful Relationship When a teenage Kate's boyfriend Mark is introduced, the audience quickly gets the sense that he's bad news. However, it isn't until more of the couple's storyline is revealed that we understand the extent of the harm he's causing her in the relationship. And yeah, things got intense at times, but like, we're kids. No. I was a kid. You were a 24-year-old man. And I wasn't broken, I was grieving. After finally breaking things off with him, she discovers she's pregnant. It's completely gut-wrenching to watch her wrestle with this reality on her own. Kate. Um, so where do they actually do it? Will it be in here? No, the procedure would happen in the room next door. And that happens today, right? She knows she can't stay tied to her horrible ex, but doesn't even tell her mother when she decides to get an abortion. Her strength is undeniable, but just as it impacts us seeing it unfold, it's also clearly left a mark on present-day Kate. How you held my self-esteem in your hand, and then you decided to crush it? God, that damaged me, Mark. For years, I swallowed my dreams, my feelings, Number 14, Rebecca's Last Wishes. By season six, Rebecca's condition has worsened to a point where the family has to get serious about the time they have left with her. During a traditional family Thanksgiving up at the cabin, the Pearson matriarch calls a family meeting. She becomes uncharacteristically forceful as she lays out the harsh reality awaiting her. This disease is a real bastard, and it, it's set me on a road that's gonna have a lot of ugly twists and turns. She explains that her condition will only worsen, and she needs her family to understand her wishes while she still has a clear mind. Any attempt at resisting tears becomes futile, as Rebecca insists her children never compromise their dreams for her sake. You will not make your life smaller because of me. This thing that's happening to me will not be the thing that holds you back. While we sense her desperation and fear, this moment is also the ultimate display of a mother's love for her children. The only acceptable response is a resounding, yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yes, ma Number 13, Dr. K's story. We meet Dr. Katowski in the very first episode of This Is Us. At that time, though he made a big impact, we don't know much about his life. It takes time, so. Yeah. Later in the first season, when the big day is revisited, we learn that Dr. K's wife passed away more than a year previously, and that he still hasn't come to terms with her death. Baby, I don't know if I can keep doing this without you. Seeing him talk to her out loud is completely heartbreaking, and realizing that he kept all of her things completely intact since she died is even more so. Luckily, the Pearsons unwittingly gave him the push he needed to move on. I hope this is what you want me to do. Number 12, the death of Jack's mother. It's no secret that Jack's relationship with his family is complicated. Considering his toxic father and his estrangement from his brother, he only really has his mother. 
However, this episode turns their close bond on its head after he learns of her passing. The house I grew up in wasn't an easy place to be a son. But it wasn't an easy place to be a mother either. When he goes to attend the funeral, he realizes just how much he didn't know about his mom, and the guilt is overwhelming. And she had a real life out here, and I never saw it, and now she's dead, and I missed the whole thing because of you. He feels that he sacrificed being a good son in order to become a good father and husband for his own family, and has to grapple with that reality. All of the emotions build to the service, and when Rebecca and the kids show up, Jack delivers a breathtakingly vulnerable and completely stirring eulogy. They gave me a new home. And Debbie, Mike, and everyone here today, you gave that to her. Number 11, Nikki's Vietnam Story. Season three features a new part of Jack's story, his time in Vietnam. Through extended flashbacks, we learn that he actually enlisted in order to protect his brother, Nikki. I just need to be where he is, okay? Even if I can't get to him, even if I can't do anything for him, I just need to be there. As their time as soldiers play out, the terror and heartbreak of the war builds to a horrifying scene where Nikki accidentally causes a Vietnamese boy's death. The tragedy tears him and Jack apart, simultaneously crushing our spirits. What did you do, Walter? What did you do? What did you do, Nikki? He was just a kid! He was just a kid! I'm done! I'm done! This notably sheds light on Jack's silent suffering. But beyond that, it sorrowfully shows how the weight of Nikki's guilt has crushed him and how his PTSD rules his life. I never got to tell him. It was an accident. Luckily, an all too determined Kevin helps him get help and stands by him as he turns his life around. Number 10, Kate's miscarriage. Throughout this entire episode, we know that Kate has lost the baby, so seeing her and Toby prepare to become parents is difficult to watch. Her refusal to grieve and Toby's efforts to avoid having that package be delivered are an interesting juxtaposition. When Rebecca arrives to offer her support, it's a bittersweet moment considering the conflict they've already had over Kate's pregnancy. Seeing Rebecca break down in a grocery store after her own loss puts it all into perspective, reminding us that people aren't always able to share their grief with family and friends, but that it's still very much there. I'm sorry if something happened. Number nine, the funeral. Okay, you know we're leading up to the big stuff here and we'll of course be getting to the fire eventually, but the episode following Jack's death was almost just as heartbreaking. Yeah, screw it, not wearing a tie. I'm not gonna wear it tight at that soon. You wouldn't care. The Pearsons are preparing for Jack's funeral, and we're simultaneously seeing flashbacks to Jack buying the family Wagoneer years earlier. We also see Dr. K attempt to comfort Rebecca in another tough moment. We have to stop meeting under such dramatic circumstances. Yes, yes we do. Rebecca brings the kids to Jack's favorite tree after the funeral and makes a quiet pledge to her husband that they're all going to be okay. If you were able to get through this episode with dry eyes, we salute you. Number eight, Miguel's death. While Rebecca's eventual passing is hinted at throughout the series, Miguel's death comes as a completely unexpected blow. So I would choose to be with you. As if the choice were mine to make. He begins to feel helpless as he realizes his declining health means he can't take care of Rebecca as much as before. Still, it seems only natural that he'll remain by her side until the end. Kevin, she's my wife. I made a vow. So his sudden death is downright distressing and brings the family together to confront what the future holds for their mother. It's insanely hard to watch as a sick Rebecca continues to wake up panicked asking for Miguel. 
and it's even harder to see the show's almighty matriarch in such a vulnerable state. We grieve him and feel our hearts crack open for her all at once, and it's impossible to bear. I need your rest, because tomorrow we're gonna have a fun, beautiful day. Where is Miguel? Number 7. Rebecca and Jack Losing the Third Baby From the very first episode, we knew this show was going to yank at our heartstrings. We lost the third baby, Jack. I'm, I'm very sorry. We were already weeping for these characters we barely knew when Dr. K delivered the devastating news that Rebecca and Jack had lost the third triplet in childbirth. Explaining to him how you took the sourest lemon that life has to offer and turned it into something resembling lemonade. His speech about turning the sourest lemon into lemonade has become something of a cornerstone of the show, and Milo Ventimiglia's performance in that scene is simply outstanding. When Jack later has to deliver the news to Rebecca, the audience is devastated all over again. Number 6. Kevin Runs to Randall From the outside, Randall has got his life together as an adult. He's got his big house and fancy car, and of course his incredible wife Beth and their two daughters. Internally, though, he's just as much of a mess as his siblings, and we get to see the full breadth of his anxiety in this episode where he suffers from a breakdown. We've seen that Kevin and Randall's relationship can be a tenuous one, but in Randall's moment of need, Kevin is the one who realizes something is wrong and runs to be by his side. Seeing Kevin put his brother's needs above his own is as heartwarming as Randall's breakdown is heartbreaking. Number 5. Kevin's Breakdown This season 2 episode is all about Kevin, and we get a lot of insight into how he became the person he is. Peterson's about ready to release Hecox back. Boom! He's down, folks! We see the injury that effectively ended his football career, and the tender moment with his father when Jack gave him his Vietnam pendant. In the present, Kevin is struggling with substance abuse and is on a bender when he makes an appearance at his old high school. We are all very proud. After having a one-night stand with an old classmate and misusing her prescription pad, he realizes that he left his pendant there and has a full breakdown on her front lawn when she won't let him back in to find it. It had nothing to do with you, all right? I'm in pain out here. It's heartbreaking. Number 4. William's Death Almost from the moment we meet William, we know our time together is limited. He states right out the gate that he's dying. And as much as Randall and Beth try to help by seeking out the best doctors, ultimately there's nothing anyone can do to stop the inevitable. In this episode, Randall and William go to Memphis together, and we also get to see flashbacks to William's younger years and his own struggles with his mother's death. <coughs> You're okay, Dad. <laughs> Seeing Randall call William dad in his dying moments is almost too much to watch. Beth's tribute in the following episode shows she can be just as vulnerable as her husband, even if she is the head. Number 3. The Fire Montage This was the episode that we were all anxiously waiting for, the one where we'd finally find out what exactly happened to tear the Pearson family apart. I love you. Jack, be careful! The episode opens with a bang, with their family home already engulfed in flames. You can't help but be on the edge of your seat even though you know how it all turns out. I think I hear one. I think I can get to him. Get down here! No, Jack! Jack, don't go back in the street! Go back to the street! Go back to the street no, right Jack, now! Get down here. I'll be right out! Jack! Seeing Jack get his whole family to safety feels like a huge relief until you realize, wait, isn't he not supposed to make it out alive? When he runs back in to get the family dog and keepsakes, we all held our collective breath, only to see him confusingly come back out safely again. Number 2. Jack's Death you Must really love that dog. Really love the girl that loves the dog. We found out partway through season 1 that Jack had died years earlier, but that didn't make it any easier to finally see it play out. The creators of the show took an interesting approach, not letting Jack go out in a literal blaze of glory, but rather in a quiet moment in a hospital room when no one saw it coming. Your husband went into cardiac arrest. It was catastrophic, and I am afraid we've lost him. 
This shocking turn of events meant that we were surprised, even though we knew it had to happen. Seeing it all through Rebecca's eyes and then watching as she completely broke down was almost too much to handle. We were right there with her. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Randall confronts Rebecca. His heartbreak over her keeping his birth father a secret is palpable. Everything that I Just think- Just stop! Please stop. I can't, I can't even look at you. The martial arts class. Jack movingly does push-ups with Randall. Are you willing to raise this young boy into a strong man? Yes, sir. Are you willing to push him to be the best man in the world he can be? Yes. Kate and Toby's big fight. Tensions rise after a scary experience with their son, Jack. You know what burns me up? The fact that you think because you sing with a bunch of blind kids that that makes you the only parent in this family that can raise one. I am the only parent in this family, Toby, period. That's the way you want it. That's the way you've made it. Beth's backstory. Her father's passing and her ballerina past are movingly explored. The doctor wants your father to start chemotherapy, so that's what we're going to do. Wipe those tears. We have to be strong. Kate lets it all out. She finally starts processing her trauma and grief in a deeply powerful moment. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rebecca's Death There's truly nothing that could have prepared us for Rebecca's unavoidable death, but the penultimate episode found a deeply moving way to soften the blow. What a thing you made of it all. What a big, messy, gigantic, spectacular thing. It uses a beautifully executed train metaphor as Rebecca approaches her final hours, and we're immediately devastated. William guides her through train cars filled with loved ones, and as the big three say their final goodbyes, Rebecca reaches the end. I love you, Mom. Uh, we're good now. You made us good. As if that isn't enough to get you grabbing the tissue box, she enters the caboose, lies in bed, and sees Jack there next to her. Their gentle greeting marks a bittersweet conclusion, giving the audience a comforting yet completely gut-wrenching sense of closure. We're definitely not sobbing uncontrollably just thinking about it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.